And I said, what is, what's this? And he said, Jay, uh, so-and-so Dent was my grandmother. Mm-hmm. And, so, and I said, well, my mom's great, great, great uncle was J.W. Dent's brother. So we've got Dent's in the family tree, and we've got Watson's in the family tree, and we've got Willett's in the family tree. Oh, and so, cool. we, so we call J.W. Dent the family bourbon. Hey everyone, for our Patreon August giveaway, we have t-shirts and rock glasses from today's guest, Kentucky Bourbon Boys Distillery Tours, as well as a t-shirt from our past guest, Eight Oaks Craft Distillers. I also threw in a special flask from Old Forester to one winner. Our winners for the month of August are Christopher Miller and John McWalter. Congratulations, fellas. Next week marks the end of September pledge period, and that means another giveaway will happen in a few weeks. Next month, you can look forward to some killer rocks glasses from 12 different distilleries as part of the giveaway. So you have until September 30th to get in your pledges for this month. Today's episode has an additional 20 minutes of listening pleasure that didn't make it in the podcast, and you can only listen to every second of it by supporting the show on Patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Bourbon Pursuit. And we're back with another episode of the Bourbon Pursuit podcast. Just kind of here today, I'm flying solo. Ryan can't be here because we all have actual jobs and today is another bright, sunshiny day in Kentucky and it's his busy time of the year. So he's not gonna be able to join us today, but it's, I've got another uh, great group of guests that are that are on here today, and it really plays in well to what's been going on. A typical theme that we've seen is a lot of people are coming to Kentucky for bachelor parties or for new vacations or weekend getaways, and we are having another guest on today that can help you enjoy that experience a lot more. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our guests. So today we have Tim Hagen and Ethan Pardue. Both of these gentlemen are a part of the Kentucky Bourbon Boys, which is a tour group. So gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right, so before we kick it off and talk about your actual jobs and the tours and everything like that, let's learn a bit more about you all. So uh, Tim, I'm gonna push it over to you first. Kind of give us your your love affair with bourbon and how it started. Uh, Was it a a family thing or just growing up in Kentucky? That, That sort of thing. Well, uh, that's a hard question because we, uh, we're all Kentucky bourbon boys. We're all born and raised here, uh, the whole group. And, um, you know, growing up as a kid, my dad always had Old Crow in the house. And so we saw that all the time, but we didn't care for it. And we really didn't drink a lot of bourbon uh, until 2011. And at that time, uh, we saw the, uh, the bourbon trail was really kicking up. And there was a lot of uh, interest in, you know, getting the passport stamps and getting the T-shirt that you would get at that time. So um, we went on that first tour and didn't really know anything about bourbon much at all. And um, we had a great trip. And uh, we did three tours in one day, and we said, this was so much fun. We need to do that again. So we went a month later, did the rest of the tours, got the T-shirt. And of course, we were the typical, well, it tastes like bourbon. Mm-hmm. And uh, I might have a hint of honeysuckle in there. You know, we joke about being able to pick out flavors because we couldn't tell anything at the time. But since then, we've really enjoyed learning about bourbon and really uh, expanded our knowledge base from there. And so it's, uh, we now have collections and we argue about which bourbon we like better. And, uh, and of course, we can't pick a favorite bourbon. That's that's the easy that's easy <laughs> cop out right there, right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> so Ethan, I'll, I'll push it over to you. So how did you get into uh, spirits, bourbon, or anything like that? And also say your ages too, because we have a pretty varied age range here. Right. Well, I'm 26, um, and I I actually hadn't had never had bourbon until we started doing the bourbon trail and like the trips that Tim was just talking about. Um, and when we went the first time, it was, I think it was like two months or three months after my 21st birthday. So like I said, I had never, I don't think I'd ever had a drop of bourbon in my life until that day. And I wasn't a big fan the whole day. Like they were all laughing at me cause I was having to force down my tastes at each distillery and everything. Um, but after that, it just, I found a couple that I liked and started going from there. 
Um, and the more we went, the more we drank. And so I was able to find my palate that I enjoyed. So I guess what was the, those baby steps like? So what, how did you get started into it to be able to say like, oh, okay, well, I can start stomaching this stuff a little bit more right. now. <laughs> I'm going to embarrass myself. I actually started drinking uh, like the American honey that uh, Wild Turkey has, or I was just drinking bourbon and Coke. But then the more I drank with these guys, they were all giving me shit all the time. <laughs> um, That's how it works. Yeah. And so I got tired and started finding the lower proofs and things that I would drink, found my, my range of preference. Right. Uh, and then Tim, we forgot to mention. You don't don't have to say if, if you know your age range, right? Because you know, another thing to talk about is you know it's just not you two that take care of Kentucky Bourbon Boys, right? But you got a, a whole whole slew of people that are doing this, right? Well, I'm the old fart in the group. I'm a 56, and I retired last year. And so when I retired, they all said, "Now it's time." You got to step up and do, do something, you want. Yeah. and uh, and start the business. Uh, you because you have time. All the rest of us are working, and uh, so that's when we got together uh, last July. I had retired in June, and a month later we had our first meeting and said, "How do we do this?" And it's gone from there, and it's gone. It's gone really surprisingly well. You're, you're the typical like new age retiree who just doesn't know how to quit working, right? Oh, that's right. I, I have a problem with saying no, and uh, <laughs> and everybody who knows me knows that, and I'm sure they're laughing right now. But um, but I couldn't sit around and just do nothing, of course. And um, we really talked for about three years about doing this and starting this business and um, and starting to do tours. And uh, it was intimidating, not knowing much about business at all, really, and how to get started. And um, the Bourbon Boys are made up of nine guys. You can see on our shirts here, we have the original nine, because um, it's our play on Sons of Anarchy, because we're just like those guys. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> just like them. Just like them. <laughs> and uh, there were nine of us on that original tour. And uh, you talked to Laura, who's my daughter, and to set up our get-together today. And she contacted us and said, hey, you guys need to, to take a look at this bourbon trail and go on these trips. It looks like it's getting big and, and you all would have fun. So nine of us got together. It was um, mostly family and then some friends and my son-in-law and a nephew and brother-in-law. And uh, there were nine of us in the van and Laura drove. And we knew she could handle nine guys easily, which she did and uh, put up with a lot of stuff from us both trips uh, but was able to dish it right back out so that's how we got started and that's where the bourbon boys she tagged us that day on that trip and called us the kentucky bourbon boys that's awesome that's how that got started and now was the idea because you saw a a niche in the market to say like there's there could be more competition that could be built here because uh for as as much as we know there's only a few players in this town right that are actually doing it so i I think you might be onto something because i could travel to chicago and i could see nine different segway tours that are available to me right but when you come here um there's there's just a a a variable pick so is it just a niche that you kind of saw like we could we could help fulfill that market gap well it it didn't even really start as a desire like to have a company or anything it was just we kind of just grew because like he said we did three i think we did two or three tours just us we did the bourbon trail once and then i think we did one or two more tours after that just the group of us and then maybe plus or minus a couple people um and then after that like the wives were brought in and then more families started coming in like people that were just hearing us talk about it and so more and more people started coming in people would invite friends and people just wanted to be involved because they just heard we were having a good time and laura was blogging like half of the tours and so people just wanted to do it and then people were like hey you all could do this with whoever exactly. like people would pay to do this with you and we're like hey let's do it right yeah so, so good that, way to make some money on the yeah. side right yeah well and that's we we said we don't know that we'll ever make any money but we're, we're <laughs> yeah. having a good time doing it we're and uh us. and like ethan said uh people heard about us doing those two trips and said hey we'd like to do that and that original group of nine has now grown to about 100 people in the social group. So when you hear about Kentucky Bourbon Boys, it's, it's kind of two-part. There's the social club, and it's pretty informal. I mean, we don't charge a membership or anything. But people not hear, yet. Not, not yet. yet. <laughs> but people hear about it, and they want to be a part of the activities. And we, so I organized the outings, and um, 
will say, okay, we're going to go check out these two distilleries on Saturday that none of us have been to. And so I'll put together the lunch. And so we'll carpool and take 30, 40 people and hit a couple different distilleries. And, and people always say, when's the next one? What's your next event going to be? So after that, they got to saying to us, you all need to start the business, like Ethan said. And we, we really laughed and thought that wasn't going to be possible. And one thing has led to another. And, um, and so we've done, we've done about 20 25 tours now since february that's awesome so yeah. talk talk about your tours a little bit like what what's the offering uh the format and all those kind of different things i mean we kind of set it up to where people can set up however they want it's very individualized um when you go on our website we have it set up to where you can pick directions and so you can pick any of the uh the distilleries that are in that general direction and then we have corresponding uh restaurant options and stuff where we've we've had discussions and got in with a couple locals and they can set it up to pretty much however they want okay so kind of give us an idea if i want to go east of louisville or south of louisville or wherever i want to go and, and by the way is is louisville the 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 main starting gate where you guys you guys do all your business well um what ethan was talking about is the we call them regions or areas so when you go on the website you can see that the Louisville area has the distilleries that are all you know close to town here and with so many that are in development coming soon that it's really going to explode because there are so many distilleries in the works within the next year that that list will continue to grow and then we offer an option to go south around Barstown and uh, all those distilleries, and of course, there are several new ones on, on the way there, too. And then we'll go east, and we don't mix and match because of the drive time. And people coming from out of town don't realize how far apart some of these places are, and they want to do something in the east, like Woodford, and then they want to go to the south and go to Jim Beam. And it's, you know, we'd spend a lot more of our day driving. So we group the tours and give them the option of where they'd like to go and sometimes they know exactly they they'll ask we want to go to Willet and makers and sometimes that was actually the last tour i did and that was and then other times they'll say we don't know anything we just like bourbon uh where should you where should we go so then that we get creative with them and we try to give them an experience that they'll see a range and maybe go to a craft distillery where there are a handful of employees and then go to one of the big ones where there are three to four hundred employees so they get a really uh, varied experience but they come away they love it and they they can't choose which one was their favorite I mean I remember going and looking at a few craft places as well and then also going to the big boys and this it is it's such a huge stark difference in the fact of, of what's happening because you've got one side of the table here that and actually it might be at a literal table where they are writing the barrel number on the bottle and adhering the bottle and actually filling it out of like a you know it could be off the still it could be off of a, a gatorade jug you don't really know what you're going to get when you go to those craft distilleries and then you've got the other side of it where it's completely automated you've got these uh massive systems that are doing pretty much everything for you and you've got union workers that are sitting on the side just basically making sure that nothing's going wrong right yeah but it's it is a pretty interesting way to look at it so talk about uh you know when you want to take a tour at the bourbon boys um you, you mentioned carpool is that is that something that you do or do you have uh, buses or shuttles or anything like that like how do how do people kind of get around to all these different places well when we when we do the social events we carpool um and it, it's always a very combination of folks that go family friends people from our churches um, neighbors just all kind of mix and match and it's different every time so we just carpool and say meet at this distillery uh, we went out to kentucky artisan distillery last saturday and uh, then went down and toured copper and kings which we hadn't done yet and that was a great great tour both places um, but otherwise we have vehicles that we lease and that we uh, take folks in and we um, we ask them if there's a special occasion if it's somebody's birthday or if it's a bachelor's party we want to know about that and so we t try to take care of the special 
honoree whenever we do something like that too. Gotcha. So I guess another question is because, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I figured is you would have some sort of shuttle or way that people are mm-hmm. getting around. And it's your all's job to kind of fill people's knowledge and, and kind of break up that time between everything with, with giving them information. So give me some idea of, of how did you go about learning a lot of the things that you know about Kentucky bourbon or the individual distilleries that you're talking about as you are making your way between all these different places? Well, a lot of it is we've we've called them our recon tours. We kind of have just gone out and we'll go to distilleries. And then as we're going, we're just looking like two or three of us will go or sometimes a bigger group. And we just are watching for whatever's there. Like we'll drive through these little towns and see like what we call mom and pops and just these little hole in the wall type restaurants that we know people aren't going to get anywhere else. Because that's been our focus is we we don't want them our our clients to only experience bourbon we want them to experience kentucky and so that's we've just kind of gone out and found what's there and we the more we go on our roots or like we'll come outside of our roots just to see what's there and we're paying attention for whatever people might want to see so not a whole lot of like panera box lunches is what you're not trying to a, say. No, you not at all you won't have anything that's a chain we're not going to <laughs> applebee's uh, but what we do it, what we've seen is a lot of our guests are, most of our guests are from out of town, of course. And um, a lot of locals say, hey, well, we've always talked about that and we, we want to do that sometime and we've never done it. It's kind of like going to Churchill Downs and going to the Derby and not many of the locals make it there. But um, all the out-of-towners are here. But the out-of-towners will come in and they, they don't know anything about Kentucky at all. And so... Ethan talked about earlier we try to be good ambassadors for Kentucky and we've been able to leave people with a really good impression about the state about the people the culture the food uh, the bourbon experience and so that's been something that we didn't really realize was going to happen in the process that we've done this but uh, we've had great responses from every tour that we've had and every guest we've had about how much they love the countryside and they loved the friendliness of the people and uh, and the bourbon and the different uh, places that we've taken them to to have lunch. And we would tell them, when we go to this place, you're going to get good Kentucky home cooking. And it's going to be something that you may not have had before. So it's funny, we'll we'll have somebody say, well, what's a hot brown? Oh, and then, yeah. And then when they say that, we say, uh, well, you're going to have to have one. Yeah. <laughs> you need to order one because we can't explain that. And uh, they love it. That's awesome. <laughs> so I, I'm going to put you two on the spot here a little bit, right? Because, you know, when we're traveling to distilleries or something like that and you're on a shuttle bus, you've got to fill that time talking about bourbon knowledge or Kentucky knowledge. So kind of give our listeners uh, a sneak preview of maybe something that's uniquely bourbon or uniquely Kentucky that you do to kind of like fill that time as, as you're as you're going. Well, uh, first question, usually well, there's two questions that we get and um the first one is usually, how do you pronounce the name of this town? <laughs> and so, so we have a little mini lesson on how to say Louisville. And uh, they practice. And uh, throughout the day, we'll hear them talking about Louisville. And uh, they get pretty good at it. And then the other question that we invariably get is, what's the difference between bourbon and whiskey? And we tell them, first of all, we don't want to... We don't want to go over all the things they're going to hear on the tour because we don't want to take some of that thunder Mm -hmm. from the tour and have them, you know, hear it over and over again during the day. But we'll outline some of the basic things and we'll we'll have a long discussion about the difference in bourbon and whiskey. And that they'll ask a lot of follow up questions about that because they're trying to understand. And um, so we try to leave them with that. And then we talk about how the bourbon boys started. Um, what our experiences have been, the kind of places that we've gone, and some of our social events that we do, and we, um, they want to know a lot about that, and usually they want to know how they can become a bourbon boy, and um, and then we get a little bit of the equal time issue about the bourbon girls, and so uh, the the girls shirt you've got here, um, we've got the cross out of the boys, and the the girls is written in script over it, so the girls have their own um, shirts too. And uh, they go with us on all the outings, but they'll ask, how do I get a bourbon girl shirt? And so uh, we talk about those things. And then the, the, the history of the area and some of the 
um, interesting things that we'll see along the way. But we try not to point out and say, well, there's this and there's that. And, you know, we don't want to bore them to death like that. And, and we'll also see that there's there are times where they want to talk with each other and they want to talk about what they're seeing or they they talk about their kids or whatever. So we kind of we play it by ear and see when it's appropriate to ask a question to get the conversation started or onto a bourbon topic and when to leave them alone and let them do their thing too. Gotcha. Well, I'll throw one your way just in case you feel free to use this whenever you want. So whenever you're, you're heading towards Lexington, you can always talk about uh, dumb state laws, right? And in Lexington, as far as I know, it's still a law that you can't walk around the city of Lexington with an ice cream cone in your back right. pocket. Right. Yeah. And, uh, for people that are outside the state of Kentucky, that if you don't know it, uh, there used to be a huge ring of horse stealing. And so to deter people and what people would use is they would have ice cream cones as that's what horses go crazy over because it's basically just sugar and they would use that to steal horses and when you couldn't actually you know tempt a horse by putting a sugar cone in front of its face you would just put it in your back pocket and walk away and then the horse would follow you so technically it wasn't stealing so yet another kind of funny kentucky law (laughs) well that's just something funny like people have talked to us about like when they come here from out of state or out of the country, they're looking, they're Googling, like, what can you do in Kentucky or in Louisville? Like, the, all the, like, tourist attractions and things. And one of the things we keep hearing about, it's apparently on the top of the list for, like, things to do in Louisville, is to find Colonel Sanders' gravesite. <laughs> and people ask us about it, and we're like, well, it's over. hell, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> it's, but then you go to Cave, I think it's Cave it's Hill. Cave Hill right down yeah. the street. Yeah, here from here, there's yeah. a the stripe that goes all the way to it and yeah that's it's always funny like because then we've taken i think we've taken a two several groups two or three yeah and we get there and we're like okay here it is there it is like (laughs) well apparently i maybe this is a thing i don't know i've only read it on TripAdvisor, but you actually have to go and get ketchup packets from kfc and you leave it on its grave did you see any ketchup packets there i didn't see any there when we've been there oh okay (laughs) Maybe that's just something that, that I made up then. Random, <laughs> random facts I just made up. So we'll get, we'll get back on topic here. So um, what I guess, uh, what's, the, what's the most popular request for distilleries or anything that, that people want to do? Like, I guess, what's, what's the one thing that is pretty common that comes up? Makers. Uh, people want to go to makers a lot. Um, that's, I, of the tours I've done, I always go south. Um, because it's the route that I've come to know and be uh, comfortable with. But I've done a lot of uh, tours to, every tour I've done actually has gone to Makers. And then the other one, the other one or two have uh, varied. But people are always wanting to see Makers and want to own bottles. bottles and all that. Um, but yeah, and also people want to see Bardstown. They want to see Bourbon Country. And so we'll go, um, I've... On all, again, on all the tours I've done, we've stopped at uh, Mammy's Kitchen for lunch, and so we'll go eat there, and they'll get a hot brown or a bourbon burger, and then we'll go walk Historic Bardstown, and they'll see Talbot's Tavern and stuff like that. They just, again, they want to see Kentucky. I always get the fried pickles when I go to Mammy's. It's yeah. always it's always a staple for me. I don't know. It's Sometimes I'll just be there and hanging out in Bardstown someday, and I would just get a basket of fried pickles and sweet tea and just hang out, right? Yeah, well, they... Um their hot brown is good too, and so it's debatable which is who has the best hot brown. Uh, when we go east, we do Darlin Jean's uh, Apple Cobbler Cafe in Midway. We go there, and um, so they they've loved the food there, and they um, they always come out of there and say, "I'm going to bring family here. We're going to come back over here and check this out." So they've been really the restaurants have been really good with us. When we head east, people generally ask for Woodford. Um, and some and a lot of Buffalo Trace requests, but we will take them to Town Branch and Wild Turkey and Four Roses, and we've done that. And when we do that tour, uh, we make a little side jaunt over and check out Castle and Key and the progress there that's going on. And they're just mesmerized by that place. And I love stopping there and just seeing the progress of the facility. Yeah, every few yeah. weeks, everything something's it's changing, so, right? Yeah, every yeah, they just got some new doors on the front uh, the other day. I saw, and uh, they they want to just explore the whole place, and so we swing by there and check it out. And they and they talk about well, when we come back, we're going to book another tour, and we want to see Castle and Key, and check that out. So we um, generally though makers uh, in the south and 
Woodford and Buffalo Trace in the east. Are you seeing any kind of pickup for a lot of things that are happening in just the central Louisville place, you know, Louisville area of going to Edna Williams Bourbon Experience or anything like that? Or is, is that kind of like, well, we can start by going to Bardstown and then we may be able to make it back for like uh, the last tour of Evan Williams experience or something. That's like that. what a lot of people are doing. Yeah. And, and peerless, we, you know, they'll talk to us about, we're staying at this hotel downtown. Um, and we provide a flyer that's got a good cheat sheet of local bars and bourbon bars and restaurants and sites to see, including distilleries in downtown Louisville that they can walk to. Like like Peerless and the Evan Williams experience, and um, you know when they finish Whiskey Row and all those things open up there, and Rabbit Hole opens up over on Market, all those things happen there. There's just going to be so much to do. They can they can walk to a lot of it, um, but we've taken a lot of groups out to Stitzel Weller, and they loved that. That's a, they do a great job with their tours there, and Kentucky Artisan Distillery now they they've got a great tour, and it's a neat little craft distillery there. Right. Cool, cool. Uh, let's see. I have to cut this out. I'm trying to figure out where I was at here. Um, okay. How many people are on a tour, like on average, right? Because I'm sure that you get people that are calling for two or even parties of 20. So I guess how does how does that work? Well, we actually we've we've decided that we're, we start at four now, like is our smallest number because it's it's just better for us. Um, but we've actually ranged from four to I think the most we've done is 20. Yeah. Um, and we've had a couple talks with groups about doing uh, 30 in the fu- in the near future, um, but yeah, our, I think our average have been like four or like 12 to 16. Yeah, because um, we're either doing families or like bachelor parties. So what what it's turned out on our website, you can choose a public tour or a private tour, but we're not big enough yet to cobble together groups of a few people from here and a few from there to have a private a public tour. Um, and so we just tell people that they're basically they sh- all private tours. At they, this point. Yeah. They're yeah. private tours right now. And if and if we can't accommodate somebody, we really, you know, want to help them out. And so we try to be as, as supportive as we can to give them other ideas and st- to give them mint juleps information so they can contact them and uh, and still get in a tour because we don't want them to, to leave frustrated that I called and I couldn't get a tour with somebody so we we want them to have a good experience here and we want to give them some good options and i guess how many you said you were doing 20 plus tours since february i guess so how how often is it to just kind of come around whenever business is good or you have a regular cadence on on how all this works yeah it's it's staying steady yeah and um you know i talked to a group yesterday from st louis with 17 that, that have booked and in October, and um, and they're coming for a 40th birthday, so they're coming from all over the country. Uh, Ethan did a tour last week with a group from London, so we've had folks from Australia and London and all over the United States. And um, I talked to uh, someone from Vancouver yesterday that's planning to come this winter and and bring some guys down to do a tour. So right now, you're right, basically what we're doing is private tours and it's groups of family or friends or celebrations. And what's the the cost on average per person when when you are doing something? I think it's about 140 per person. It's 130. Um, okay, per cool. person, and there's a there's a small booking fee on the website when they book, but that fee covers everything. You you don't have to do anything once you book. If you tell us the two distilleries you want to see, then uh, we'll book those. And if you don't know, we'll give suggestions, and then we do all the planning, provide the transportation. So we'll pick you up right here at your house, uh, or your Airbnb, or your hotel, and. Um, and then a bourbon boy goes along as your guide for the day, and um, then two distilleries and lunch are all included. So when you say if you have a, your group, Kenny, that wants to go, we'll contact you beforehand and get your lunch order together. So Mammy's knows we're coming, and they know what time we're coming, and they know that you want the hot brown. And when we walk in the door, the food hits the table. And that's been one of the things that's really impressed our guests is that we do all that pre-planning so that they don't have to sit around and wait to get their orders taken and wait for the food to be prepared. We let the restaurant know when we're about 20 minutes away, hey, we're, we're headed your direction. And they get the orders going, and we walk in the door, and the food hits the table. Oh, and, fantastic. Uh, it's really 
they've been great working with us to be uh, supportive of our time and for the guest time. That's great. So talk a little bit more about all the bourbon boys, right? Because I'm, I'm looking on the website here and you have a total of, I believe, nine bourbon boys that, that make up the group, right? And, and Tim, you are, you're number one, right? Because <laughs> I guess you're at the, you're the top of the ladder here. And, and Ethan, at 26, you made it to number three. So yep. you, you must have done something to, to make it up quick. <laughs> but uh, kind of give us an idea of, uh, you know, the listeners have had a chance to, to talk to you and listen to you now. Uh, kind of give them an idea if, if they are going to be booking with the Kentucky Bourbon Boys, kind of uh, some of the other the other gentlemen involved and, and who they could expect on their tour and a little bit more about them as well. Well, I think we're all characters in our own way. Um, as we said, or I don't know if I said earlier, but I am the youngest of the group, so you have the oldest and the youngest here. Um, but about half the group is about closer to Tim's age, half are closer to my age, because um, it's, when we the, like the original group is... From my perspective, it's me and then my cousin's husband, two of his friends, and then my father and my four uncles. So, um, again, that, that gives you the age range, but everybody, all of us love bourbon. Everybody is a character. Um, you might get somebody who's a little more of a <laughs> rascal than others, <laughs> but <laughs> you're going to have a good time regardless. Well, that's right. And it's... Uh, you know this family business that we started and it's the four uncles of his it's the four my brothers three brothers and then um, the son-in-law and the nephew and a couple of their friends and um, we're all here locally except for ones in Knoxville so he's he's always working to get groups together to come here to tour with us and then Laura is our unofficial member of the Bourbon Boys as one of the Bourbon Girls because she was the driver. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she does all of our social media and our graphics and a lot of our communication with folks. And uh, and she's does tours too. So she you might get Laura on one of the tours or one of the Bourbon Boys. Well, fantastic. So if people want to know more about your tours uh, and they want to know about all your offerings and how to book, how are they going to do that? Well, they can uh, they can find us on Facebook and on the the world the World Wide Web at uh, KentuckyBourbonBoys.com, and um, we're on Twitter and Instagram, and uh, we're at KY Bourbon Boys for those uh, two social media sites, and uh, we're always posting. We post from our events and uh, activities that we're involved in or things that we're interested in. And uh, you can go there and find us, and uh, there's a book a tour link right there. And so people will say, well, what do you guys do? What is the Kentucky Bourbon Boys? And we, we tell them we're, we're a social group that like to have a lot of fun together, but we also provide tours for anyone that's interested. So um, you can reach us on those, and then our business phone number is on the website, too. You can call and, and book a tour. Well, awesome. Well, thank you all so much. I definitely appreciate you all coming in today because, uh, yeah, I mean, I think what you're doing is you're hitting a really good niche part of the market. There's always, as as bourbon's booming, it's, it's I don't even think it's, it's hockey sticking, but I don't even think it's really hit the hockey stick point yet where it's no. going to get bigger and bigger. And I think that uh, business is really going to be good for the tourism industry and everything like that. And it's going to be bringing in a, a lot of people. You know, we've got people from... Uh, all over the the world that actually listen to this podcast and and now that they know that there is a good option out there to be able to have somebody to take over the reins when you come here to you don't have to think about anything you say here take my money and tell me everything I want to learn <laughs> and uh, we promise a good time in the process there you go right. it's it's even better right so uh, one again say thank you all for joining me on the show today uh, make sure you also you also follow Kentucky Bourbon Boys on Twitter and Facebook and all those great places follow us as well Bourbon Pursuit. You can find us on Instagram at Bourbon Pursuit, Twitter at Bourbon Pursuit, and Facebook.com slash Bourbon Pursuit. We try to put good information there for, for everyone. And if you do like the show, make sure you support us on Patreon. And actually, one thing I forgot to say is you also have a swag store on, do. on, yes, your, on your site as well, right? So if you want a Kentucky Bourbon Boys t-shirt, polo, glassware, whatever it is, you can go and buy that as well. And we might even be having some Kentucky Bourbon Boys giveaway for our Patreon members. So Absolutely. if you do, like, if you support the show, patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash bourbon pursuit, uh, go ahead and sign up and help support the show. And we're going to get some swag sent your way. Uh, again, thank you, Tim and Ethan, for joining us on the show today. It was a pleasure. And we will see you all next time. 
This podcast of Bourbon Pursuit is in partnership with thewhiskeywash.com, a lifestyle website for news and reviews for people who like whiskey, and for those who think a life without whiskey has no style, thewhiskeywash.com. From the farm to the winner's circle and every step in between, ownership in the sport of kings is no longer for just the elite. It's for you. FinalFurlongRacingStable.com can and will make your involvement in the most exciting sport in the world a reality. Visit FinalFurlongRacingStable.com now and live the dream for real. Partner and be directly involved in all aspects of a horse's career. Specializing in New York bred horses and with over 25 years of thoroughbred racing experience, the Final Furlong team wants to partner with you. Yes, you. Visit the website finalfurlongracingstable.com and find out more now. Champions are crowned in the Final Furlong. Finalfurlongracingstable.com